confident welcome to our revision session this is part two of dynamics and as i said previously that i will do a two-part lesson so this is the second lesson now if this is your first time um, coming in contact with this lesson just know that there is a part one and i will encourage you to go through it before you look into this one as it will also help you to understand this lesson and the topic is on dynamics. This is the first question that you get in your, in your engineering science N2. And also guys, just to begin, before I just begin the lesson, if this is your first time coming in contact with this channel, I will encourage you to subscribe to our channel and also ensure that that notification bell is turned on so that you can be able to get notification every time there is a new video that we're posting. And don't forget your comments your ideas, your suggestions, they are very, very valuable and we take them seriously. So don't forget to leave your comments if ever there's some things that you want to add or if there's some suggestions concerning the channel that can help us improve this channel. Now, let us look at the question and I say this is a topic on dynamics. So I took a question from a previous paper and uh, as I'm making this video, this is a current paper which was written on the 8th of April, um, just to a trimester away, two trimesters away. So it was written on the 8th of April, 2021, and we are still in 2021. So this is, as I say, the current paper. So let us see what the examiners brought in this particular topic on dynamics. So the first part uh, here, it is a uh, question 1.1 and say it is dynamics so that's the first part that you you come in contact with so question one and it's 1.1.1 so let us look at the uh, question it says describe the motion here in full says describe the motion of a body depicted by the graphs below in terms of velocity and acceleration so we are supposed to describe the motion and then of a body depicted by the graph below so we have to look at the graphs below then they gave us a reference or the words that are key then they're saying ensure that it is in terms of velocity and acceleration so in our description we must talk about velocity and we must talk about acceleration and if we look at the mark allocation for each question is three by two, meaning it's three questions and each question is worth two marks. In total, it's six marks. So these are good marks. So now, which means it will be one mark for describing in terms of velocity. It will be another mark for describing in terms of acceleration. So don't uh, leave out any of those because that's where your mark allocation is. So let us look at the first part. Then the thing, describe the motion of a body depicted by the graph below in terms of velocity and acceleration now let's start with 1.1.1 so this is a velocity time graph now it is a straight line as you can see in this velocity time graph now what does it what does a straight line mean number one a straight line means increasing you can see that the velocity is increasing there it means increasing velocity that's the first part number two while velocity is increasing increasing um, while the velocity is increasing and then what we have is because it's a straight line this is called uniform acceleration so just remember that so when velocity is increasing like this it is called uniform acceleration or sometimes they use the word constant acceleration so whenever you're dealing with that, you're dealing with uniform acceleration or you're dealing with constant um, acceleration. So if you are to describe now the motion of this uh, body in a single statement to say, then here we are going to say the body is moving at increasing a velocity all 
right so the body is moving at increasing velocity with uniform acceleration don't be too much uh, focused on the grammar but the keywords are there or you're going to say instead of uniform you use that word as you said with constant acceleration you know so that is the part that is happening here a straight line means yes from zero you can see from zero to a certain velocity up there it means the velocity was increasing but straight also means uniform acceleration remember the gradient of that graph is acceleration now 1.1.2 uh, 1 we are looking now at this velocity time graph again this is a straight line but it is a horizontal graph it's a velocity time graph it's important to know and then it's a horizontal graph now what do you conclude when the yeah, graph is horizontal like this number one this is constant velocity you see the velocity is not changing so it's constant velocity number one now number two when the velocity is constant now the gradient of this graph is zero it means no acceleration or zero acceleration or zero acceleration so this is what you conclude from this graph so if you have to describe the motion of this body you can say the body is moving at a constant velocity so the body is moving at a constant velocity with zero acceleration so you see what I mean or oh, with no acceleration so the keyword there is remember they said whatever you're describing ensure that you tell us about the velocity and the acceleration so in terms of so every description it is to have velocity and acceleration that's why i say the body is moving at a constant velocity then they will mark you that constant velocity with zero acceleration they will come and give you that mark there then the next part is 1.1.3 um it's it's a velocity time graph again and now you can see that the line is starting from v from a certain velocity to velocity at that point v your velocity is equal to zero so that is zero velocity so what do you what do you notice on a graph that is like that number one it's the body is moving at its uniform velocity this is still uniform velocity because it's a straight line but it is decreasing the keyword there is decreasing so uniform decreasing velocity and then if you look at the top we say it uh, increasing velocity so the body is moving at increasing in velocity with uniform acceleration actually here I'm, I'm supposed to say yeah it's fine to say uniform decreasing velocity uniform meaning it's forming a straight line in a way or um, the, 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 the part I think let me remove the uniform part maybe just to say one um, let's make it it's correct but let's make it decreasing velocity just to avoid the confusing of some words there we can say it's a decreasing velocity or here we can just mention to say it's moving from a high velocity to zero velocity so you can see that it was moving from that and the number two what we notice what we call this decreasing velocity we are called we call it deceleration deceleration that's the uh, common word or negative acceleration sometimes some prefer to use that so deceleration is acceleration in the negative so you can use that so how can you describe that we can say the body 
is moving with a decreasing velocity remember we say this is decreasing when the line is going down like that with a decreasing velocity and it is decelerating it is decelerating but because it's a straight line it's a decelerating uniformly it's very important the uniform deceleration i think that's where we must use the word uniform so even here it's supposed to say uniform deceleration because it's a straight line it's it's uh, that word uniform is important so that is how you can uh, get those marks guys if you're working from that level all right let's move on to question 1.2 now question 1.2 it says a tennis player here um, so that i can show you the marker location so it says a tennis player throws a tennis ball up as he is about to serve the ball took five seconds to come back to the same position from which it was thrown so let's try to sketch that so we have a tennis player here don't mind the diagram but just as an, an example so we have our tennis player here uh, okay let me just use straight uh, line so we have our tennis player there he is So in this case, he is serving. So while he's serving, they say um, there is a ball. So this ball, what happened to the ball is he throws the ball up. Remember? So he has a ball with him. So the ball goes up like this then the ball is somewhere there at one time there so this is the ball and then after that the ball comes back and the ball is back to his hands so let me make his hands so the ball this is the ball is back to his hands now all right so this is the ball back now let's get the information again so the ball was going remember the ball went up and came down so they are saying this is a tennis player so a tennis player throws the ball a, a, a tennis player throws a ball a tennis ball as he's about to serve the ball took five seconds to come back to the same position from which it was thrown so it's five seconds meaning you need to now interpret this carefully meaning for the ball to go from the hand to this particular top when it was here it took half of the time which is 2,5 seconds and then to be back there it took 5 seconds this is very important now you need to interpret information uh, properly now now remember it left his hand with a certain velocity so there is a V of the ball Actually, we don't call that V, we call U because it's the initial velocity in meters per second. And then at the maximum here, the ball had to turn back. No, the maximum here we say a velocity is equal to zero meters per second, where the ball is turning back. It is zero meters per second. And then um, when it's zero meters per second, it, the time taken was 2,5 then when it left the hand it was moving at uh, u meters per second now the question here let's read again a tennis player throws a tennis ball up as it's about to serve the ball took five seconds to come back to the same position so to come back to him it's five seconds from which it was thrown so here we are also assuming that there is no air resistance we are neglecting or we are assuming a lot of things question 1 comma 2.1 calculate the velocity with which the ball leaves the player's hand three marks so we want to find the velocity at which this ball left the hand meaning we want to find u in this case that is what we're looking for the, the velocity left the 
player who went back and come come back to his hand. Now, if we ignore the effects of air resistance, throw that inside here, the, the ball left the player's hand at you, and then at maximum, this here is called max maximum height. At maximum height, the velocity, remember, it is going to turn from going up, now it is going down. At that point, we say the velocity is equal to 0 meters per second. Now, if you use the formulas, there are three formulas that you have to uh, think of. The first one, the common one, let me write them in a different pen. Uh, the common formulas that you have is V is equal to U plus AT. And then you've got V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. And then you've got S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. These are the equations of motion that are common whenever you're dealing with um, the velocity time, uh, I mean, motion or dynamics. Now, here, what are we given? We're given time, it's 2,5, so we can use any between the first and the second, and we're also looking for the initial velocity, but we're not told the distance, so we, the first one is the one that makes more sense to say V is equal to U plus AT. In this case, we know our final velocity at maximum. This was zero is equal to initial velocity is what you're looking at plus. Now acceleration here is very important for you to, to remind. Now acceleration here is equal to because the body, when you throw this ball, it is moving under the influence of gravity. Remember when you throw it, then what is bringing it down is the force of gravity. So that acceleration for something that is moving in the air the acceleration there is g which is gravity which is 9,8 don't forget that but now we are going to assume something here which i didn't say we're going to say take up as positive so the meaning that the motion of the ball going up is positive when it is going down it's negative now acceleration in a way is forcing the ball to go down even if it's still going up it's acting it's always acting towards the earth which is downwards so here we're going to say zero is equal to u plus now g t meaning g there is our acceleration okay so zero is equal to u plus now we say acceleration if up is positive acceleration is acting downwards which is negative nine comma eight times now t we say it is 2,5 because it's half of the chain mm -hmm. in this case all right so if we continue it will be uh, 0 is equal to u and if I can use a calculator then which is negative 9 comma 8 times 2 comma 5 it gives me negative 24 comma 5 All right, so if I can now find u, meaning I can take this to the other side, so 24,5 is meters per second, in this case, is equal to u. So now the question was calculate, let me just check again, the question was calculate the velocity with which the ball lifts the player's head. Now, if I can write my answers, number up. 2.1.1 uh, velocity is equal to 24,5 meters per second. So this one, remember, it is upwards. That's why it's positive. So that is the velocity with which it leaves the player's hand. Now that was 3 marks. And then 1.2.2, it says here, an expression so I think I wrote it wrong I said 2.1.1 so 1.2.1 is this particular equation so this is 1.2.1 all right 1.2.1 1 
1.2.1 numbering is very important guys now let's look at 1.2.2 then it says calculate the maximum height reached by the tennis ball from the player's hand now we are talking about this part here the maximum height where the ball is going to tend from going up to going down so if we are going to find the maximum height there are two from um, remember we've got our equations now the the maximum height is depicted by s s is the one that is going to tell us the di displacement or the height so you can see that it is in those two equations now i think um let's start with the first one which says v squared is equal to u squared, u squared plus 2as for the maximum height so we are saying uh, v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as now we are interested in s remember so i can call it the maximum height as v squared is equal to u squared plus 2ah for the height now a also i must change a to become g remember we said acceleration is g so velocity at maximum we said this was zero squared at that point is equal to u squared which is 24 comma 5 squared plus 2 times negative 9 comma 8 remember we said we are taking up as positive so gravity is acting downwards times height now if i simplify this it will be uh, 0 is equal to if i find 25 comma 5 squared it will give me 600 comma 2 5 so minus 9 comma 8 times um, negative 9.8 it will give me 2 times um, negative 9 comma 9, 8 give me negative 19.6 so times height now take negative 19 comma 6 to the other side it will be positive 19 comma 6 h is equal to 600 comma 25 then we divide by that 19 comma 6 on both sides because what we're interested in is the height so if we do that it will give us uh, if I'm dividing 600 divided by the 19,6 uh, 600,25 over 19,6 it gives me there is the answer there which is 30,625 so I'm getting 30,625 remember they said the height the maximum height so it is meters so that is that to say 1.2.2 to say height in bracket maximum height is 30,625 meters but also as i was saying i can actually use a different method here um, from what I'm given remember we said we can use the second one s is ut so let's use that one to say s is equal to ut plus a half a t squared we are looking for s being the h for the height is equal to u t plus 1 over 2 a is g t squared you know our time it was 2.5 seconds to go up if you still remember we say the time taken is 2.5 seconds is half of the time because it was five seconds to go and come back so our edge here is u which was uh we calculate is 24.5 so here i've got 24.5 times t which is 2.5 plus half times g is negative 9 comma 8 
times t squared is 2 comma 5 squared. If we do that, let's find our height. It must give us the same answer in this case. So we're going to have, in this case, 24 comma 5 times 2 comma 5 plus 1 over 2 times negative 9 comma 8 times 2 comma 5 squared. All right, so if we do that, it will give us again the same answer, 30 comma 6 to 5. All right, you see that? So this is meters, so it's up to you how you wanted to work it out, but uh, you are given both equations to, there was information for both equations to get that. Okay. That is that part, so it's two marks. So let us move on to question number 1.3. Question 1.3 here. It says an athlete. Uh, to make it clear. It says here, an athlete pre preparing for her race was jogging at a velocity of 5 meters per second. She noticed a barking dog in front of her and decided to stop. It took her 10 seconds to come to a standstill. So let's get key information. An athlete preparing for a race was jogging at a velocity. There is the key first keyword. The velocity of what? Five meters per second. So that's the first part. The velocity that so she was an athlete preparing for a race was jogging at a velocity of five meters per second. So already we're told she's already running and the velocity there. That mainly becomes your you because already she is running. She noticed she noticed a barking dog in front of her and decided to stop. Now the part she's stopping. It took her ten seconds. That's a keyword again. Ten seconds. I mean the key information to come to a standstill. In other words, to stop, meaning a standstill. Now, which means our final velocity there when she stops it becomes zero. Question 1.3.1, calculate the athlete's acceleration as she noticed the dog. Uh, so we're going to find the athlete's acceleration as she noticed the dog. So if I can just try to work it directly from, I can just remove this info here below. Okay, let me leave out my equations because most of the time these are the common equations that I need so I'm gonna work and keep on okay erasing that so let's look at this so the question says calculate the athlete's acceleration as she noticed the top so we have got an accel an athlete that is uh, um, running initial velocity so let me have that information so we say for the athlete the u here is equal to 5 meters per second and then they're saying it took it 10 seconds to come to a standstill so the time taken is 10 seconds meaning the moment she saw the dog from 5 meters per second to 0 meters per second from 5 meters per second to final velocity of zero meters per second it took a 10 seconds that's what is that's what they're saying then calculate the athletic acceleration now you can use the first formula then okay, to say v is equal to u plus a t final velocity it's zero is equal to initial velocity which is five plus a and time taken there is 10 seconds are you seeing that? Now we have to solve for t. Now take 5 to the other side. It's, it will be minus 5 is equal to 10 times a. It's 10a. Then you have to divide by 10 on both sides to get acceleration. And if we do that, it will give us uh, negative 5 over 10, which is negative half, which is negative 0, 0,5. So negative 0, 0,5 meters per second squared is equal to the acceleration so 
Remember, acceleration is meters, some that I did like that, 0, 0,5 meters per second squared. So it's still the same thing. Per second, some they put a line, some they put a negative 2. So that is the acceler acceleration of the athlete here. It's 2 marks because it's 4 marks in total. 1.3.2. It says, calculate the accompanying displacement covered by the athlete. So the accompanying displacement, meaning we're looking for S. Now, at this stage, um, we, we know our, let's look at the information here. We know we have got time. We have got u and v, so it's your a now and acceleration. So we can use that. This is the first one there to say v squared. So this question is question 1.3.2. 1.3.2. One if I use a v squared, is equal to u squared plus 2as now final velocity was 0 squared is equal to initial velocity which is 5 squared plus 2 times acceleration is negative 0 comma 5 times um, s so now what we have remember 5 squared I can take it this side 5 squared is 25 is it is actually let me do it like this so that I don't confuse things then I'll say 0 is equal to 25 and then I multiply 2 times negative 0 comma 5 gives me a negative 1 so it will be minus 1 s remember s is my displacement there so if I want to find my s the better one is to take this one s to the other side so I've got one s is equal to 25 I mean one s is same as s is 25 now displacement is measured in meters so the answer there is 25 meters again I could have used this one here I could have used um, this formula here to say s is equal to ut plus half a t squared so that I've got s is equal to initial acceleration plus 5 times time we say time was negative uh, okay time is 10 seconds sorry for that time is 10 plus 1 over 2 times acceleration is the one that was negative 0 comma 5 we've just found that which is negative 0 comma 5 times t is 10 squared so if I do that what I will have here is s is equal to so you can see that uh, the formulas can still give you the same answer as you are using them properly and substituting properly so it's plus half and then times negative 0 comma 5 times 10 squared you get that is 25 so this will also give us 25 now displacement is measured in meters so that is that and that is how you have answered this question so if you look also sometimes in this question says an athlete preparing for a race was choking at a velocity of that sometimes to have a sketch of what is happening there you can literally sketch it to say this is how the motion was the the we're looking at a velocity sometimes they will ask you to sketch that this is a velocity time graph of this athlete so this is our v in meters per second and then this is our time in seconds so this athlete already is moving from here which is five meters per second and then from there it's coming to stop it was uniform deceleration at that point the time taken there they say it was 10 seconds so that
that is 10 so that is actually what is happening when they're saying displacement in here um, I mean the acceleration that's why it was gradient in here to say a is equal to gradient remember gradient if I look at that point here the coordinates if you remember that the coordinates of this point is 0 and 5 and here it's 10 and 0 and, and, uh, and acceleration is the gradient of the velocity time graph so if, if you use that y2 this is x1 y1 this is x2 y2 so if you use the part of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 you can still get it to say y2 which is 5 minus y1 0 over x2 0 minus uh, x1 which is 10 if you use that you'll see that it will also give you in a way that acceleration that you got so if i say 5 minus 0 over 0 minus 10 come down over 0 minus 10 see this give us that negative 0 comma 5 that's what i just want to bring and then if it works you also remember displacement the question was find calculate the accompanying displacement displacement it is the area under this graph that area see this area under the velocity time graph that is what we call s this is where you find your displacement s and then remember the formula here its area is equal to displacement which is equal to half times base times height so if you say 1 over 2 times the base is from 0 to 10 times the height is 5 if you look at that it's a half and the area is is the area of uh, this triangle is half times uh, the base times the height which is equal to so area which is our s area is equal to if you look at that now it's half half times base is 10 times height is 5 if you do that you get 25 so you see you still get 25 but now this will be meters which is our displacement so it depends how you want to do it whatever case if you understood the sketching of this you would have done it using um, the area as well as the gradient formula so this was just as an extra thing all right guys we have come to the end of our lesson as i was bringing this to you as the question that involves uh displacement and i mean not displacement as such but dynamics so use this to practice and it can be uh, of help to you now remember to subscribe to our channel as well as um, turn on that notification bell so that you can be notified every time we post a new video we've come to the end of our lesson thank you Thank you.